Alice Cooper is in the studio with us. I was saying I'd like to hear Cold Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> I think Cold Ethel would have been a good Saturday morning cartoon, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> have you just been up watching the cartoons before coming in? I always do. Saturday morning meant cartoons to me. I saw a cartoon of you. Was it on The Simpsons? Oh, it might have been, yeah. They did a thing when they were all, last day of school, and they played schools out, and they yeah. were, yeah. Now, what's it like walking around being Alice Cooper, the legend? <laughs> you know, I think people may be disappointed. I go into Kensington Market or something, and, and I don't have a snake on, you know, and yeah. I'm not wearing what I wear on stage, and I'm not, you know, chasing people around with an axe. And I think that they may be disappointed, you know, and I go, well, if you want to see that, you have to go to see me on stage. I mean, that's the Alice character. Yeah. There's two of us. Because Alice is a character. That is. I mean, I always created him to be a character. Right. And do you have a real name? I do have a real name. Alice Cooper Mellencamp. But <laughs> that's that your stock taken, answer, isn't it? <laughs> taken by somebody else. <laughs> Alice Cooper Mellencamp. I remember when you first came out, I was sat there with my parents, you were on top of the pops or something. They said, how come that guy has a woman's name? And I really couldn't explain Th it. It worked. Was... That's exactly the reaction we wanted. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, it was funny because we wanted to create a character that, first of all, we were in competition in L.A. When we first went to L.A., we were a high school band. Yeah. And here we are trying to make it. There's 15 clubs to play in, and there's 25,000 bands from all over the United States trying to make it. And in this club, the Doors are playing. And mm. In this club, the Buffalo Springfield. And, you know, I mean, all these great bands. And all you're trying to do is get an audition. You know, just to get in, so I said, you know, we got to do something that's going to offend Jim Morrison's mother. You know, <laughs> if you're going to find a target, Jim Morrison's mother, how can we offend her? You know, Alice Cooper. Yeah, that does it. You but, you, I mean, you've since been topped by bands called things like the Dead Kennedys. And yeah, yeah. Well, Alice Cooper wasn't a very nice, pleasant name. Like, you've probably met a little old lady in the store. Oh, my name is Alice Cooper. Yeah, you know? that's right. It's a sweet little old name. I mean, it's not like a scary name. Have you ever thought what you must have done to people actually called Alice Cooper? Oh, <laughs> I, lost my, I lost my bank card, right? And I went into the bank, and they brought up on the computer, and they said, well, we have 25 Alice Coopers. <laughs> And I said, well, mine would be the Mr. I said, how many Mr. Alice Coopers do you have? And they said, well, Excuse just me, one. <laughs> Mr. Alice Cooper? I said, if you have more than one, I'm going to be worried. <laughs> Now, also, the other thing about Alice Cooper is that he is a god to so many other musicians. I mean, Alice was there first doing all of that scary stuff. Were you aware at the time that you were a trailblazer? I was kind of the Christopher Lee of rock and roll, you know. <laughs> but, you know, that was the fun part of it, is the fact that rock and roll needed a villain. Mm -hmm. We had all the heroes we needed, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, we didn't have any villains. So Alice was the perfect villain. He was the Captain Hook. But there would have been of, no Kiss or you know, Black Sabbath? Or... Well, I mean, that was, we were certainly first. And we were certainly ones that didn't have a problem with having a little black humor on stage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't think we were any more sacrilegious than Monty Python, you know, but we were rock and roll, which mm -hmm. made it a little stranger. But we were funny, I thought. It was a Halloween party. It was theater, wasn't and, it? And really? it was fun, yeah. And when people left, they said, what a great party. And we left them with schools out, with Alice with the White Top Hat and yeah. Tails, and that's still always the ending of the show because people love that. Because you're performing on Monday and you've got Roger Daltrey on the bill, then you've got Paul Young, and then you've got Gary Brooker from Proco Harlem. I used yeah. to love the records. I think I wore out the Shine On Brightly album. Yeah. Darlene Love is on as well? Darlene Love, yeah. And this is where on Monday night? It's at Albert Hall. Right. And it's unique because, I mean, it's the first time I think I've ever come to London and played everybody else's songs but mine. I'm doing a Pink Floyd song, a Stone song, a Who song. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> which to me, I grew up on those bands. They were the bands that influenced me. <laughs> so when I see Roger down at rehearsal, you know, I said, you know, No More Mr. Nice Guy was written as a salute to Substitute. Great. You know, I said that was like a big influence on us. And so I wrote that song as sort of a tribute to you guys. Who do you think are the great performers of today? Because there are fewer performers these days. A lot of people come on stage and they're very natural, yeah. but they're not giving a performance. Yeah. I think that there are some performers out there. I like, as much as I am not into the boy bands, the boy mm. dance bands. You've got to like bands that go out there and do a show. I just saw Backstreet Boys, yeah. and I saw you know the Spice Girls, I saw NSYNC, and as much as I'm not into that kind of music, they do a great show, and they actually go out and rehearse, and they do a production. Rob Zombie, on the other hand, mm. you know, does a more of an Alice Cooper type of show, which is really fun for me to watch. Rob Zombie? Rob Zombie. You're going to get Rob Zombie over here. He's really good from the White Zombie. <laughs> and he's got his own show now, and it is so much fun to watch because it's industrial rock, but it's all done with video behind him, and it's like the Munsters comes to life, you know? <laughs> 
So you aren't a fan of the kind of shoegazing indie bands then? No. It's not your I mean, scene. to me, it was like, that was just like the epitome of lazy. It was <laughs> sort of like, okay, we're going to be angst riddled and we're going to be really bored and we're going to be so introspective that all we can do is just be in love with our music. Oh, come on. <laughs> you know, somebody just paid 15 pounds to see you. Do something. Yeah. You know, breathe. Check their pulse. <laughs> do something. Okay, Alice Cooper is here. We'll be right back with Alice. to midday. Alice Cooper is here. The interesting thing about you is, and what a strange thing, you're very, very, very into golf. You know, Just I mean, trying to make the game more violent. Do you belong to <laughs> any of the upper-class golf establishments in Britain? I think that when I play Sunningdale and Wentworth, I'd probably get an eyebrow raised. <laughs> I think so. But, you know, if you're a three handicap, they can't say much. I saw a fantastic documentary on David Cassidy that showed a clip of you playing golf I with him. I played with David, yeah. Is he all right? Yeah, David can play. But so can Iggy Pop, so can Lou Reed. Oh, I can't imagine Lou Reed, Lou Reed playing well, golf. The last time I saw Lou Reed, he goes, Alice. I said, he said, what? He says, I'm shanking my three wood. He said, I'm hitting it right. What do I do? And I realized Alice <laughs> Cooper's talking to the Velvet Underground about how to straighten out a three wood. I said, this is so bizarre. It is bizarre. I mean, it's almost hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, there's two bands that should have died or been put in jail forever from the 60s, you know. Yeah. (laughs) We're talking about golf. I mean, I think of Lou Reed in the same way I think of you or, I don't know, Bob Dylan or... Well, Lou's great. I mean, you know, he's a survivor. Yeah. You know? He's just kind of legendary characters. Well, it's great. Yeah, and these guys, you know, believe me, in America, golf is not a posh sport. Golf is an everyday sport. Well, I live in Phoenix. We have 300 golf courses in Phoenix. It doesn't matter who it is. They play golf because it's not a posh sport. Here, it's a different thing. It's more of a... I think less so these days. I mean, I think all kinds of people play golf now, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, more so than ever before. What actually is the appeal, Alice? You see, I'm not into golf. I've tried, and some of my friends are into it. It's it's the most difficult game. Yeah. And when you get involved in it, the better you get at it, the more addicted you get to it. Why? It's the drug of the 90s. It really is. Golf really? took over drugs. Everybody that I know quit taking drugs and drinking. and they Well, they didn't quit drinking all the way. I did. And now they play golf because it's more addictive than any drug. That's an interesting thing. Well, remark. think of it. How many guys do you know that you know started playing golf? They've lost their houses, their wife, and everything. Yeah, golf. Not over knows. drug, over golf. Yeah. <laughs> and I knew somebody... Uh, who played in the rain? You know, if it's raining, still go out. Doesn't there. matter. Doesn't matter. See, I'll know? play in the rain. I won't play in lightning. Lightning is not fun. <laughs> what? You know, in Arizona, you get a lot of lightning. You would so. look great on the golf course with lightning. Oh, yeah. That would be a perfect Alice Cooper sure. scene, wouldn't it? Absolutely. It'd be a good video. <laughs> What's this box set they've given me here, Alice? This is um, 81 of your favorite little ditties that your grandmother used to sing to you, but when you couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> this is everything you've ever done, right? Maybe two or three songs off each album, 25 or 26 albums. <laughs> so it's a lot of material. And some unreleased, some stuff from high school. Great. When we were in high school. We put everything on their warts and all, you know. It's called The Life and Crimes of Alice Cooper. It's a massive box set. And it's doing f- really well, too. It's the fastest-selling box set that Rhino's ever put out. Is that a fact? Yeah. So and it's got a picture of you on the front as Alice. It looks like you're Hannibal in... Hannibal Lecter kind of thing. In right? jail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where you should be. <laughs> I get let out for interviews, you know. Yeah. That's nice. Listen... Good luck with the uh, box set. Thank you. That's a fantastic thing to have. I'm going to have that. They've given me that. I'm going to keep that. That's yours. And I have another album 
in my hand. This features Eric Burden and yourself and Roger Daltrey. So this is all the people that will be appearing on Monday. Yes. Is that right? Yes, I think so. So how have we Nobody got the album already? Nobody ever tells me anything. I don't know. <laughs> That's but incredible. We've gone into the future, did the album, and then came back. Kind of like Dr. Evil in <laughs> yeah. Austin Powers. <laughs> you know that new Austin Powers movie? We're not actually allowed to really? say the title of the movie. Well, you know, over there, that doesn't mean the same thing. I guess it does, but nobody knows that. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And that's the funny joke. That is. You can catch Alice Cooper and his pals at the Royal Albert Hall on Monday. This has been great for me to meet Alice Cooper and I know and for me, Jamie. Completely, I saw you when I was knee high to a veritable grasshopper well, like and it was a fantastic now. Yeah, so you don't have to feel too old. I feel better now. <laughs> She's only fan, 17 years old. It was old. fantastic. Thank you. I thank love you too. very much. <laughs> Thanks, Alice. We got no principles. Cooper.